just your world seemed kind of tough, but right after that was Star's World, and you guys seem pretty excited to get back to that one. That was a really fun one. I'm not gonna lie, that's a good one. Yeah, Star's World is actually pretty fun. And then there was Tori's World. Yeah, that one was horrible. And then right after that, I appeared, and we had Sam's World followed by Black Powder's World. Sam's World was hard for me because I'm not smart. Black Powder's World was hard for me because I lost myself. Well, there's always room to improve. Well, I should, I should let you get back to the kitchen. Black Powder probably needs some help. Yeah, I can go help help with the plates and stuff. I mean, you can help if you want. That's okay. Okay. I think I need some time to think. That's fair. Listen, we're all here together. We're kind of stuck with each other. Might as well just get comfortable for a bit. I think Veed is going to ring like a dinner bell. There's probably a dinner bell or something to bring everybody in and you come into the room and it you've had a bunch of meals here before but i think between black powder frankie and and Veed, they just went all out um and you are welcomed with some very um comforting smells both sweet and savory so it's basically a pie day so they've gotten pies of all types the apple they have multiple versions because um, you know how you can have like apple pie with like the the sugary crust on top and then you might have something that's a little bit more simple with just a normal like crust um, on a normal crust um, you have uh, there's chicken pot pie uh, for those of you who want something more savory and there is the very classic deep dish pizza pie for people who would like deep dish pizza pie instead um, for their meal. So everything looks really great. Veed seems to be beaming because he's like, I helped make this. I needed a lot of help, but I still helped make this. <laughs> so, um, and if any of all of you can like take a sample of whatever you'd like. And um, if, you, if you try him, it's actually really good. Really, really good. Thank you. Apple pie. So, so okay, so Sam definitely definitely approves of the pie. Um, Veed, when when you all are starting to bite into it, he seems really like nervous, like biting his, almost biting his nails, nervous. Um, but seeing how people seem to not be hacking and coughing after they eat their food, he seems to be very relieved. I just sit and watch everybody eat. <laughs> Frankie is stuffing his <laughs> face. Yeah, you again, you don't feel hunger, but you might probably like still miss eating, even though you don't feel hungry, Tori. Yeah. So. I definitely remember what it feels like to eat pie, and I miss that. <laughs> um, Star is still not there at the table. Star still in his room. Oh, Star didn't start is, didn't make it. I was gonna say if Black Powder noticed his star isn't there, he'll actually put together a plate of food and take it down to him. Knock on Star's door. Star will answer it. Well, you'll hear the doorknob fumbling, and then the door will open, and Star will be looking just ghastly, and his like mascara's running because you can tell he's crying. Oh, and he'll he'll wave, and he'll say what's up but he'll mouth it slowly so it's like you're seeing him talk well i know you said you weren't feeling very hungry but one thing i know is that food fuel is important so i figured i'd bring you down a plate to eat when you're ready star will look at your hands and say he'll open the door and he'll like with his left hand kind of like fan you to and he'll just like say, point it somewhere. It's not like he's doing it on purpose. It's just what he's used to as a celebrity, people bringing him things. 
and he'll just set it wherever star points. Star will say, be, oh, right. He'll walk up, he'll get in front of you before you leave and say, he'll reach for your arm if you let him take it. Yeah. And he'll put, I used to do this with my sister all the time. He'll put your hand on his throat and say, I am so sorry. You cannot hear me. Can I see if I can fix it? If you want to. Although I think I'm the one who should be apologizing to you. Star will shake his head now. And he'll he'll keep your hand there and say, bad things happen. And he'll look teary-eyed, but he'll put his hands over your ears and you'll notice his left hand is not even, not even moving. And his, I know it's a futile effort, but he'll try to heal your hearing. And you'll feel like a warm tingling sensation around your ears. And he'll put his hands down and say, can you hear me? I'm afraid not. The price I had to pay. I just wish it was mine alone. And if uh, if Star's kept Black Powder's hand on mm -hmm. his throat, he'll actually instead just put it around and pull Star into a hug. Oh, Star is going to break into tears. <laughs> like oh. big crocodile. <laughs> he'll um, kind of just keep hugging and patting him. It's like, you can just nod. Would you like me to stay with you for a while? And I'll just sit with him and let him cry. Star won't be saying much. Neither will BP. He'll, he'll just be there for him. Everybody has a, a very enjoyable meal. Anyone who ends up partaking, I'm sorry, Tori. Anyone who ends up partaking in a meal can have a plus two morale bonus, um, at least for the next, at least for the rest of this session. Um, the rest of this session. You got a plus two to all of your morale bonus, except for Tori, sorry. But Tori's OP, so I'm okay with that. <laughs> uh, okay, cool. So then um, when you're done, uh, I'm sure Veed will help clean up. And um, with your bellies full of food, many of you probably will start feeling sleepy. Um, so you might want to try to go to bed. Wanak is going to approach Tori because he he was he was chowing down with everybody else. He wasn't doing the weird thing where he teleports items to the inventory. He was actually picking up the food and eating it. But he approaches Tori. I saw you looked. You, I see how you look rather upset whenever other people eat around you. Whenever we get your bot, whenever we get you your body back, I'll find you some food. Really? Like a uh, like video game food? What kind of foods in your world? Um. <laughs> well, I can check. Lon if Lonit goes over to the kitchen, then stuff from his game from his game world would be the food in the fridge, right? So he'll pull out some Pac-Man cherries, some uh, a tangerine chocolate slice of ch tangerine chocolate cake, and then he'll oh. put it back. They look so pixelated. It does, but it tastes the same. The Pac-Man <laughs> cherry actually is relatively large and actually does hop. It like hops just like it does in the in the Pac-Man screens. I think it does that in Miss Pac-Man. In Miss Pac-Man style, it hops. So, is this thing alive? Um, <laughs> I don't think so. Well, as long as I'm not eating a a living being, uh, and I get my body back, I'll take you up on that offer, Lonic. Thank you. I just, I just, uh, I'm not hungry, but I just, I just miss being able to partake in a meal with the people I care about. I well, can't do that. It's the first time I've ever gotten to do it. 
how'd it feel? It felt like I'm ready. Ready to go back to your world? For you and for the others, I think you, I'm ready. Are you ready for, for to help you? Remember what we talked about? This is to help you just as much I, as it is to help any one of us. I appreciate it, but yeah. I don't think it's possible to help me. And that's not that I don't think you guys are capable. It's just, I've lived that life. I've lived that life more times than I can even put into words. The number of stars in the sky would be a single digit decimal fraction of the number of lives that I've lived. And I've never found a way out. Well, maybe we can find a way out, you know, if you really want to help all of us, you got to be able to help yourself first. No one's ever looked out for me before. I appreciate that about you guys. I, I don't know if it's possible to help me, but I'm, I'm ready to go back. And that means that I should probably tell you guys a few things about how my world works. Because it's kind of a lie. Yeah, I, in the morning, you should definitely tell everyone about it all together. Right, because we're in the all night squad and they're not. Yeah. Slumber party. <laughs> I'll build a pillow fort. Cool, I'll help you build the fort. <laughs> So you and Tori end up bonding a little bit uh, with your slumber party. You know, you have some pillow fights, you braid each other's hair, et cetera, et cetera. Things like that. Talk about boys. Um, I mean, actually, <laughs> actually, we could talk. We could do that last one. Talk about boys talk who about turn boys. to girls. <laughs> and vice versa. Girls who turn to boys, boys who turn to girls. Go ahead. I'm, I'm just like trying to figure out how you would braid these quills. <laughs> like, how? Did you act? Oh, <laughs> uh, no, I was just about done. I was just yeah, I'm good. having fun with the mental <laughs> image. I was going to hop into Star's dream. Okay. Go ahead. So okay. I will float on into Star's dream. So, what do I see in your dream, Star? Okay. Tori, when you enter Star's head, you're hearing thunder and lightning. You see these black clouds that flash green. And in the images, the green images, you see Star and Stormy having a private conversation. Star getting ready to accept the Grammy and feeling really nervous. And Stormy is like rubbing his bottom lip and saying, you got this, you're the only one who can. You're seeing when Stormy proposed to Star's privately about their marriage. So all these emotional things, but you you can feel a lot of fear and a lot of anger and a lot of confusion. And so what starts to bloom in front of you is that you see Star on a in a losing argument with Stormy and Star is like literally on his knees. He has no hands, they're just little red stumps of where his gloves are. And he's begging Stormy not to leave, so. Stormy, I guess, is gonna say, you're just not, you're just not the star that I used to know. Star was just so full of life, so full of energy, so full of feeling. I'm still me. I, Stormy, I'm still me. I, I'm just different, but I'm me. How can you say this to me? You you said you love me. I love you, like... I love you, Star. That's the problem. The person that I fell in love with is... is... is gone. No. Everything that I... that magic, that spark that just drives me crazy, it's... You're, it, it's, it's like you're an empty vessel now. I'm not. I'm. I'm still. I'm still here. 
I'm here. I'm I'm just different. I'm just I'm mean. I'm just help me. Please. You you're gonna to try to like reach out with your, your your stumps and then it's gonna be one of those things like in the dreams where the figure starts to like move away from you. They're not moving their legs or anything, they're just sliding away from you and they start to fade into like the fog and they're like, No, come back, come back <laughs> It's one of those kind of nightmare things. And eventually he just fades out of view. Right. So Star is sitting there, and what you're seeing, Tor, at any moment you can interrupt. Yeah. Star looks like a ghostly version of himself, but it's rhyolite, and his eyes are like blazing green. Um, and you see the other aspects of Star, but they're small bits of light. And it sounds like they're whispering, but they're shouting at rhyolite to kind of like, it's okay, we're going to be okay. But rhyolite is the dominant feeling, and it's kind of overwhelming the sensation. So at any moment, Work your magic, sis. Yeah, I think as soon as I see Stormy disappearing, I'll like rush over to you and put my hand on your shoulder and say, Star, are you okay? Tori? It's like he doesn't see you. Tori, what are you doing here? You're dreaming. I was bored. But I thought you could use some. (laughs) I, I thought. You needed some company. It seemed like you haven't been yourself. I, I feel so salty about this. I, I, I'm dreaming. And then it sounds like you hear all the voices saying, I'm dreaming, I'm dreaming. And you start to see Star look more like himself. And he starts to look up and says, Tori? And he gives you like a massive hug. Yeah, she'll have him back. You're in my dream. And he'll like, he'll notice while he's touching you. I can feel you. Yeah. And he, he's moving his hand. Tori, how are you doing this? I'm not, I'm not doing that. You can do anything in your dreams. Like I'm, I look normal in the dreams. I don't look like a ghost. See? I can make myself look like a ghost if you want. She'll transform into a ghost really quick. Is this better? No, actually. I mean, for ghosts, you have amazing skin and I want to know your routine, but I I miss the corporeal you. Okay, I'll switch back. <laughs> there, here I am. Tori, there's so much I've been wanting to say to you, and I'm sorry I haven't figured out how to say it. And all I can tell you is that I'm sorry. I'm sorry I let you fall in Frankie's world. I'm sorry that I got split up from the party with Frankie in your world. And I'm sorry you died. I'm sorry I couldn't save you. I tried. I did. And it was too late. And then in Black Powder's world, you had a corporeal body. You had Sam's body. And I didn't even... I didn't even touch you. I, I, I'm just... I'm sorry about everything. All of this is my fault. No, Star... It's not, it's not your fault. There's some things that are just out of our control, right? How can you say that? How can you say that when, if I had been fast enough, or if I had my magic in your world, you would still be with us? Yeah, if I had made a couple of different decisions, I'd still be with you guys. That doesn't fall all on your shoulders you don't you don't need to carry that burden i already live with the burden of the choices i've made you've been an amazing and supportive friend and that's all i've ever asked for from you star i love you tori 
And I'm so sorry for saying sorry, but maybe you're right. Maybe, maybe I am caring too much. Yeah, I mean, you lost some feeling, but you're not dead. <laughs> and you still oh, feel where it counts. <laughs> Yeah, I guess you're and right. And I point, I like tap on your heart. And Star will say, I guess you're right. And if we do go to Lonic's world, maybe we can get you an extra life or a new life. Maybe I can do something about this because I can't go home like this. How can I face Stormy and I can't touch him? What if he rejects me? I can't even play the guitar anymore. Star, that's... What? That's the stupidest thing you've ever said. <laughs> really? I mean, I can go stupid, but still. <laughs> Ouch. I'm just saying... If Stormy really loves you, he's not going to care that you lost feeling in your hand. Um, Remember what you told me about magic? It's not the magic in your hands. It's the, the music is magic. And that's that comes from your heart. You can make music in many different ways. With your voice. You use that a lot. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> but... You know what? Stormy will accept you, no matter what. You just gotta keep being you. <sighs> Tori, you have no idea the gift you have given me. So how about I set the mood for you? So Star will step back and snap his fingers, and the entire dream turns into a ballroom, but like a gothic ballroom with candelabras and sparkling bats and you see a big old demon at a piano and he's like playing it and then all of a sudden you see all these ghostly men and women that look ghastly but beautiful start to slowly dance together is this more your scene my friend the sparkly bats are a little twilight for me but i love this I'll have to put a little bit of myself in there. Come on, it's me. True. But <clears throat> there's something I really want to say to you. And honestly, this is the only way I know how to do it. So. Tori, you're loved and feared as Miss Spooky. I was sad to see you die. But now you're here Dancing in this ball with me Now take my hand so we can fly You reach my heart I feel it now Fly away, fly away I'm here with you My hope renewed Fly away, fly away I cannot play, my magic's gone My life is over now Here and now, I say to you Our friendship will ever die Oh star, you're bright and loud, I got used to that You lost your hand, but not your heart Raise your voice, you know I hate to sing alone Now dance with me, so we can fly I see it now, worries are gone Fly away, fly away 
We get knocked down, but life goes on. Fly away, fly away. Sing with me in our dream. You're my spooky friend. It's nice to have a friend like you. I'm tired of singing this. Here and now, I say to you, our friendship will never die. So during the moments of this dream, just imagine Star and Tori like ballroom dancing, but in the sky. And they're like dancing above the crowd um, while all this is taking place. They're dancing and it's like ghostly sparkles and things underneath their feet. And they're in like ballroom clothing, very over the top and fanciful. Um, how Moulin Rouge of you. Exactly. I'm thinking Moulin Rouge when they're singing the, that song, The Elephants. You know what I'm talking about. But anyway. yes. And uh, they'll land on the floor and Star will say to Tori, you truly are one of the greatest gifts this new life has given me. Whatever I can do to repay you for this, I promise I will help you get a life because you deserve it. And he'll kiss you on the forehead and said, I think it's time I wake up from this nightmare and face reality. Just keep being you, Star. That's why we all fell in love with you. Love you too. I love you. <laughs> and I will. Say it. Uh, no, don't. Don't tell anyone. Star. Out's on. I won't say a word. Okay. All right. Good night. <laughs> Get Bye. out of your dream. <laughs> as the dream as the dream ends, just like in Moulin Rouge style, the moon starts singing. I hope you don't mind. I hope you don't mind that I put down in words how wonderful life is. No, you're in the world. Or something along those lines. But anyway. Nice. <laughs> Because why not? Why not? Um, awesome scene you two. Very, very awesome. I'll knock on Frankie's door. Frankie, it's me. So if you tell me to come in, you'll have to actually answer the door. Frankie goes in, answers the door. Can I talk to you for a minute? Yeah, sure. What's up? He'll walk in, he'll close the door, and he'll actually just light up his pipe almost immediately. Frankie, you are an idiot. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Why didn't about... you just leave? Leave the kitchen? When I told you to leave. When Jim was coming. My brother, I was not going to leave you. There's no way. Why not? Because I had your body and you had Star's body and we're all in this together. There's a reason for all of this to happen. You're not on your own. You can't do this on your own. You didn't know. No. I wasn't on my own, but there are things I myself have to take precautions for. But I mean, it's not just you though. If it's, Where? Frankie, the fact is if I wasn't in Star's body at the time, I would have been fine dying. I... That would have been okay by me. But it wouldn't have been okay by me. I don't, I can't be in, in a situation where I just let you die, my brother. Sometimes it's the, the, the smart choice to make. Protect the majority of people, leave the weak one behind. That's just simple survival. It isn't about survival. It, it, it's... I care about you, Black Father. 
when that when you're talking about when you love somebody and you care for someone it's not about survival you you do what you have to do to make sure they're safe and you have to do everything you can to help someone even if they don't ask it themselves or they're asking the exact opposite I knew in that moment I was disobeying your order I knew but I was doing it because I could not just let you die Frankie I was terrified I was going to lose one of you Wrong. you can do what you want saying that it was for love what I did was out of love too and I'd rather die protecting someone than die the way I used to be. And I don't know if you've had time to think about it. I don't know exactly how old you are. I know you've faced life and death situations. But I constantly think about how I'm going to die. Because it's coming up. <laughs> I got maybe another three years of me, probably. So if I'm going to go, I damn well want to have the choice of how. And I love you. And I get why you did it. But your actions also devaluated my own. And my own love for you. Because if I had survived and one of you lot had died, I wouldn't be able to survive that. Just we're all kind of stuck then. You and got you... an entire life ahead of you, Frankie. Literally an entire life. You haven't even told Victor you love him yet. <laughs> and you still need to do that. Black Powder, I mean, if you came back to my world, you could potentially have a whole new life ahead of you. You became young again. You could start over. But... Well, that's lovely to think about. Fact is, it's not my place. I was so lost in your world. That isn't where I belong. Frankie, you have literally spent your entire existence protecting others. Right? That's who I am. It's in, it's in my blood, I suppose, in my programming, but it's who I am. I can't help it. You're always looking out for other people. To the point where I've seen you down your break trying to do it. Let me look out for you. Let me be the one to be your shield. Because I'm the one who can. It's going to be harder for me to accept that But I know, I understand where you're coming from. I understand what you're trying to do. And it's just hard for me to let go. How can I let go? You're asking me to let go. Because I'm asking, I'm asking you to just not give up on us. You know, don't, don't be so eager to. I'm not giving go. up. I'm it thinking felt, ahead. It felt that way in the moment. In that, there, in that moment, you were just like, we were there to help you. We did. You did. And I'm grateful things did work out the way they did. But if things had turned out differently, we could have lost you and Star and me. And Tori, because Jim had Tori's body. 
No, I was very worried. We didn't know what was going to happen to any of us if anybody got hurt. It could have started a chain reaction. Who knows? I just... I've put a lot of bad into the world. I know you've said that before. I want to do something good with me. And not because I'm pretending or playing along. Because when we went to your world, that's all it was at that time. Because I didn't know you yet. I didn't trust any of you yet. I liked you. But I did because it's what I had to do to move on. And continue forward and get out of that world. It was that way for a long time. I don't want to be that person anymore. I would like to maybe die a good man. I'll try in the future, you know, to respect your wishes. It's not going to be easy for me. I promise I won't just be given up. Because if nothing else, well, I'm a ship captain. Even if I don't have a crew, which means one day, hopefully, I'll be there to see. I'll be the one helping you and Victor say your vows. You better be. It's one of the perks of being a captain. I have to hold you to it. All right. I'll make sure to live long enough to see it if you long enough to get there. Shake on it. And a hug on it. And then he'll grab <laughs> Yeah, he'll give a big old pat. <laughs> yeah. Alright, I'll let you get some sleep. Yeah, I need a crash after all that sugar. <laughs> it seems... It seems dangerous. <laughs> sugar. Then I'll, um, on the way back to his room, he'll just slip a note under Tori's door. When I notice the note, I will look at it <laughs> and read um, it. It basically says, I don't know if it'll work, but if you ever want to try eating, I'll be happy to make you something to drink. Ooh. Well, yeah, I think I'll hop in the Black Powder's dream <laughs> <laughs> if we have time. <laughs> cool. Before we do that, I want to do something with Sam, actually. Sam, this is happening in your dream. So, you find yourself in this diner that you very often like to frequent. Um, you're sitting at the table, you haven't been served yet. You presume maybe you just arrived. And could you please remind me what is the name of the server that normally attends to you when you go to this diner? Aaron. 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 E-R-I-N. Okay. Could you describe, um, just for everyone, what she looks like, around how old she is, things like that? Late, um, at like 30s, but dark hair, of course, always fixed up in that 20s, 30s fashion, and then just polka dot, polka dot dress with an apron, and yeah, pretty common uh you know trope okay um you're sitting there and from right behind you uh Aaron walks towards you with a large coffee pot in her hand and she just says well 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 look who decided to show up finally she's got a hand her hand on her hip her free hand on her hip and as soon as she swings around you, she immediately pours um, some black coffee into your mug. And uh, she just kind of gives you a little bit of a wink and says, well, hey there, stranger. Fancy running to you around these parts. It's always good to come in and get a bite and uh, get, a, get a drink. It's been a while since we last saw you. Where have you been all this time? Well, I had a crazy case that uh, got pretty jumbled and has a lot more moving parts than I'm used to. Oh. Well, 
I'm assuming you managed to figure things out on your own. Yeah, pretty close. Pretty close. A couple of loose ends I still have to tie up, but everything's progressing along pretty well. Well, you've been Mr. Popular while you've been gone. All sorts of people are looking out, looking for you, Mr. Samuel Bennett. Yeah, I kind of expect that. But uh, what do you do? What do you do? Ah, uh, yeah, what do you do? What will you do, Sam? Well, I'm uh, hoping with all the pickle jars that are open, we just lit them up one at a time. And uh, hope the pickles stay fresh long enough. Is that what you want? She asks. Do you, do you still want to keep doing what you're doing? Or are you thinking of maybe it's high time you retire and do something else? Well, retirement's definitely looking really, really good to me. Really good to me. She says, Sam, you know that um, I've served you for a number of years and you tend to be a relatively private person. I always was very curious about why it didn't seem like um, you've ever particularly settled down. You just knock the settling down type? Yeah. Um, I think it's always been just part of my character, but starting to wonder if maybe some of that is time for a change. Change can be scary. Yeah, change can be very scary. But I've found that uh, change can also be really rewarding for yourself and for those around you. Well, hypothetically, Sam, if you were to check back on yourself five years from now, Ten years from now, where do you see yourself? Well, I used to think about a little cabin on the lake, early mornings, early to bed evenings, but to tell you the truth, I just I don't know if that's as appealing as I maybe thought it was. I think there's a lot of opportunity for things to really change and I think being a part of that change could really be beneficial. Who knows, maybe it's uh, looking at something completely in a new way, like make better radios that are more compact maybe it's finding ways to have some type of helpers for people that are all machined and not even living people but working on their own uh, i don't know i think there's a lot of opportunity that I hadn't thought of before, so I think when time comes, I'll have to see what I can figure out. <laughs> that seems to be what you always like to do, Sam. You're always trying to figure things out. You've always jumped from one mystery to another. Yeah, there yeah, again, part of that uh, character that this seems to be unable to be shaken. You ever wonder if sometimes you're trying to fix something that isn't broken? You're trying to figure out something that doesn't need to be figured out? Or, dare I say, might be best left unknown? Yeah, there are times. But when I go back to thinking if I don't, who does? I don't know, maybe that's one of the things I still have to get a grasp on. 
So I'm trying. I'm trying. Maybe if I let someone else try to figure things out and just follow suit, things could end up better than I thought they would. I'm just suggesting every now and then it might be nice to let someone else figure things out for you from time to time. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I'm starting to see it. Who knows what to, who knows what could come in the next few changes. Who knows? And with that, um, you hear a voice in the distance. And uh, she says, I need to go attend to some of the other customers, Sam. I'm assuming you want your usual? Oh yeah, absolutely. She'll go ahead and uh, uh, jot down um, a, l- a little something on her on her little notepad. And uh, she'll say, I'll be right back with that. And when she goes over to attend to the other guest who waved her over, you don't see who it is. You just hear the voice in the distance, because again, this is a dream. Um, and you'll hear the customer say, oh, yes, I would love some biscuits. I would love something that would melt my biscuits. And then that's when that's when your dream stops. <laughs> I'll end the dream humming that tune. <laughs> nice. Very nice. <laughs> yeah, I was going to hop into Black Powder's dream. Sure. What What is Black Powder dreaming about right now? Um... Right now, it's actually, it's just a dream of him when he was uh, younger, like um, the same age he was when he was in Frankie's world. Uh, just on a small sh- uh, sailboat on his own, just kind of sailing. Very peaceful, very calm. Hashtag baby powder. Hashtag baby powder. Okay. <laughs> Hashtag baby powder. Okay. Uh, uh, so I will approach Black Powder and just kind of tap him on the shoulder. Huh. Hello. I saw your note. I wasn't expecting you to show up tonight, but... I have nothing better to do, Black Power. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Alright. And uh, the dream will kind of change to be basically being the same kitchen that's in the Athenaeum, but... <laughs> quieter. <laughs> Alright, so what would you like to try? Are we talking like dessert? Yeah, whatever. <sighs> um, you know, my dad and I always made a blackberry pie together, so I think I'd like that. All right. He'll probably still end up dragging Tori in to actually help with the baking. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. And he'll make a blackberry pie in the dream. See if she can experience yeah. food. So, uh, pretty much, uh, you will be able to experience food the way any of us in real life experiences food whenever we eat something in our dreams. So, it might not be the same, but it is, it is as vivid as it could possibly be, as if you were dreaming that you were smelling, tasting, eating a blackberry pie in your dreams. So, as I'm... Uh, I'd set my fork down after taking a few bites and I said, you know, this is, this is almost as good as the way my dad makes it. (laughs) Thank you. This this actually, no one's ever thought of giving me food in their dreams before, but I'm I'm glad it was you, Black Powder. Um, I figured it was better me than Sue. Yeah, she's getting yeah. better. This is improving. Uh, he'll kind of go over and give her like that sort of like half hug, the arm around the shoulder. If you ever need anything, you can always ask. You know, I know everything that happened wasn't easy on you. It, I, I struggled with it a lot. Not, I feel, I feel. I feel bad for getting so angry at everyone else because 
I mean, I told you a little bit about what I faced in my world, but I'm not, I'm not an angel. Um, I'm starting to learn that none of us are. <laughs> no. Tori, anger is natural. It's fine. You don't have to be apologetic for being angry. It just feels like being the the bitter flavor senshi. <laughs> that bitterness rubbing off on other people. You saw what it did to Jim. And I just feel like I, I bring out the worst in people sometimes. I don't know. Take it from someone who cooks on the regular. Sometimes you need a wee bit of bitter so that all the other flavors can come out. Just like how salt is used to elevate flavors. Or uh, as acidity like uh, lemon juice is used to cut through thick riches. It all works together. Bitterness is important. And don't take what happened to Jim. That, that wasn't on you. I lost track of my bite, left my senshi bowl in the tender. <laughs> Well, all right, maybe a little bit on you, but <laughs> the result of it wasn't. That was someone... You've learned to take any bitterness you have and make it a strength. Jim was consumed by it. I don't blame him for it. But all he had in his mind at the time was bitter. But. When you first got it, you had more than that. Mm -hmm. You had a lot of love, a lot of concern. And in your own reckless way, you were very protective. All Jim wanted was to hurt. Yeah, maybe you're right. I, maybe there's... I, I worry a little bit about Felix back in Frankie's world. It sounds like from what Henry said, he's feeling that bitterness right now. So I'm just trying to wrap my head around what I can do to... He lost someone close to him. Yeah. And it may not be the exact same way, but you've lost people close to you. And I think what he needs probably is just someone who's there for him. From what I remember of Frankie's world, it's all kind of chaotic there. I don't know if there's much time to just sit there and let someone cry into your shoulder. That might be something he needs. Yeah. Honestly, I it's, it's something I could use sometimes too. But hearing a ghost cry in the middle of the night is just kind of unsettling for everyone. So I've been well. That's why you that. make it. In, that's why you go somewhere where you can have the sun shining and you can just sit on the sand and have a weep. Well, if we ever go back to your cursed beach, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. <laughs> Although let's maybe not sleep there again. <laughs> Just a quick visit. Just pop quick on the beach visit. and then back on the ship. <laughs> Maybe get Sue's curse lifted at the pond if that's possible. Yeah. Yeah, it would be nice for us to get rid of that curse. I still don't understand the joke behind that name. The sauce is short for suspicious. Surely that should be Sam's name, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. And he'll actually, he'll like tuck her hair behind her ear. <laughs> I know it's okay. been a rough ride for you, Lass, so. Never be afraid to pop pie for a visit if you need something. Even if it's just a pie. I'll be coming here for food a lot more often, Black Powder. <laughs> Thank you. How, <laughs> yeah. He'll give her a proper hug. She'll hug him back. 
Hashtag Sam Spicious. <laughs> Sam Spicious. He's he's being Sam Spicious right now. Yes, that's a new word. That's canon. That's canon. That's now. canon. It is. That's the title of this video of this part is Sam Spicious. <laughs> Sam Spicious. Well, okay. I thought it was either that or pie. Just pie. Yes. Yeah. Slice a humble pie. Uh, good end the dream. <laughs> end the dream there. <laughs> Next morning, star. You will get a light knock on your door. Star will say, Oh, wait, it might be black powder. So Star will get up and answer the door. You'll uh, hear the knob fumbling again, and the door will open. You'll answer the door, and Veed will be right there. Oh. And Veed will say, Hi, Stars. Um, I know that this is probably not the best time, but I at least wanted to give you a chance to get some sleep. But if it's not too much to ask, I was wondering if I could ask you a small favor. Yes. So I was wondering, um, this is probably a total long shot, but I don't suppose you happen to have any access to dog hair by any chance? uh, Star will open the door and say, come on in. He'll, He'll come in and he'll look around and say, wow, your room's colorful well it's me but before i find the thing you need star is going to pull them into a massive hug and say i missed you and i'm glad you didn't come i miss you too he says i missed all of you it was terrible I'm a particularly extroverted person, which I know you are too, so can you imagine just being stuck somewhere, just not having complete lack of conversation with any living human being? Or, sorry, you don't know about human beings as much. Person. People. Oh, I I gotcha. But what's important is that, you know, you're here. But yeah, that would be a nightmare. What did you do in all that time? And at this point, Star is rummaging through stuff. He he looks like he's struggling, but he's rummaging through stuff. Well, um, I mean, a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And as he's saying that, you can kind of see a thought bubble appear that sort of shows (laughs) flashback. And so you see, first of all, you see, um, Poor Veed, like, in a fetal position, like, rocking back and forth, and says, I'm gonna go nuts. I need to talk to someone. I need to talk to someone. Quick! <gasps> oh. And then you see him, like, going over and, like, taking, um, like, getting some fruit and scrambling and trying to, like, make a face out of the fruit. He says, no, 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 no. Like, I don't, I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. I've seen this in a movie. I'm not there yet. And he, like, wipes the face off before he starts, you know, like, talking to it. And then you see him, like watching um cooking shows on on the the tv and he's got like this big giant tub of ice cream and you see all these other empty tubs of ice cream and he's just going (laughs) oh this is so good right (laughs) there's like chocolate sauce like dripping down his face and then and then you see him like in the kitchen trying to like cook Mm -hmm. because He's clearly like, he's just saying to himself, I gotta keep my mind off things or I'm just also gonna go crazy. I, I don't, I gotta keep my mind on things before I start doing things like talking to myself like I'm doing right now. And then you see um, the, the, the stove in flames on fire and you see this big anime panic attack like where he turns into a chibi with like a sweat drop and his hands are like flapping anime style like oh my gosh oh my gosh and just running back and forth back and forth from the pool like dragging all this water to like to stop the the fire but then of course you know that if you have a grease fire you're not supposed to be using water so the fire actually spreads all over the oh, kitchen man. and then then he's just running around going oh my gosh this, everything is burning down the world is crumbling around me why <laughs> so why and then um and then that whole like flashback like stops and he says yeah i was fine i was perfectly fine all by myself no nothing eventful nothing eventful how did the kitchen get back together 
Kitchen? What? Nothing happened to the kitchen. The kitchen's fine. The kitchen's perfectly fine. And then <laughs> there's... You can see, like, again, the thought bubble appears. And you see that there's... He... You don't see the kitchen, but you see, like, him with a, a broom. And he's, like, sweeping a bunch of, like, ash and dust under a rug. Like, the big rug that's in the living room. Now you're just sweeping it underneath. <laughs> And Star's so like, aha. Uh -huh. So, just so you know, Sue, well, Veed, that when you lie, I can kind of see it. Just so you know. You can see it. Your thoughts. I can see them. Are you psychic? No, that's Frankie. I mean, literally, there's a thought bubble. Like, don't you see it? It's like right there. He turns his head towards where the thought bubble is, mm -hmm. but. And he's, he's facing a thought bubble, and he's like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Let's keep it that way. Let's keep it that way. So Star's going to make a mental note and talk to, uh, to Em about I mean, to Tori about it. We're going to have fun with this later. <laughs> now, this is something I do have. Um, it's a hairbrush. So... Here you go. And Star will, well, it'll look awkward in his hand, but he'll hand it, hand it over to you. Thank you. He says, you, you I just need to have it for a moment and you can get it right back. No and then he'll, he'll give it a, he'll give it a sniff. This is really awkward. He says, as he's like sniffing this hairbrush. This is really awkward. And then he finally goes, oh, 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 achoo, and he sneezes. A little bit of the hair like flies around because of the sneeze. And then he turns into Sue. And she goes, Ooh, oh, oh, wow. Oh, yes. Oh, I miss this body. It's been way too long. Oh, oh, thank you so much, Star. Thank you, she says. No problem. Star will sneeze also because of the hair. And Star will like teleport like a foot back and say, Oh, yeah. That's kind of a thing. Are you also allergic? No, just when I sneeze, I teleport. Well, that's adorable, she says. Huh. Well, you're adorable. And then he'll take the brush back and not try to poke her with it because he doesn't want her to sneeze anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, he'll give her a hug and say, it's really good to see your face, though. He'll put the brush away and say, so now that we're back home, well, uh, home is this place, are you ready to go into Lonic's world and uh, be the hero once again? Um, yes, I am. And then also, you were saying something about your world, Food Pyramid. I was a little bit lost. Help me understand. Yeah, well, we have a lot of monsters. Well, at least I have a lot of monsters to take care of. If you all want to help with that at some point before the end of our little excursion, that would be really nice. Well, this is what I'm gonna tell you. I fight for truth and love and justice, and in the name of the Oom, I'll help you. And also, I'm really hungry. That food Black Powder made, brought me last night was like, really good, and I can go for seconds. I am 100% with you on that. Let's go um, eat. But, but first, I need to go talk to somebody before we leave, oh, before we go get food. You're right. Also, Talk to Lonic, and I'll leave it at there. Okay. Sue is now going to knock on Tori's door. I will open the door and be very surprised to see Sue. Hey, it's just me. Yeah, Can I yes, come in? You. I, I guess, yeah. So, I heard that when you were in Black Powder's world, you went through some changes. Maybe some changes that I might relate to. <sighs> yeah, I was in Sam's body for a little bit. It was awkward. I, I had to go to the bathroom, but I held it the whole time because I was really, I didn't know what to do. <laughs> you held it for, oh my, when I first transformed into Veed, that was also a very interesting learning experience. Oh? Yeah, I just 
wanted to make sure you are okay, because for most people that could be really traumatic. But it seems like you took it in stride. Uh, a lot of traumatic things have happened. Uh, something in Sam's world might have happened too that was a little traumatic. I don't know, I'm just getting used to traumatic things happening at this point. It's us. Oh, well, you've been, well, you've been going through a lot of changes over the last several worlds. And since I've been used to changing back and forth a lot, although ironically, the most recent issue I was having is I haven't changed in a while. And that was driving me nuts. Yeah, how are you Sue right now? Yeah, so I, I went over to Star to see if by any chance he had any friends who were dogs and possibly could have had dog hair and he happened to have something that possibly did and I was able to use that which was great because now I'm feeling I'm feeling back to myself because this is technically how I originally was when I was born so it feels good good, good for you Sue which is why I'm saying I can't imagine what it must feel like not being in your own body. So it just got me thinking. I know that we already talked about this before, but you were one of the people that I was thinking about while you were all away. And while I was going nuts and crazy, I was like, if Tori was going through this, she would be fine. She wouldn't be going nuts and crazy and burning, I mean, messing up the kitchen. She would actually be perfectly cool with everything because Tori always seems to take things in stride. That's so I just wanted to say, I'm sorry again that this is at least partially my fault. You told me it wasn't totally my fault, but I'm telling you it's at minimum partially my fault, if not majority of my fault and that I am I really admire you for all your tenacity oh thank you Sue in her head she's like what's the catch here what is she <laughs> but, um she uh, will nod and say thanks uh it may seem like uh I always take things in stride. I'm very tenacious, but this has been pretty hard. Oh, well, to your credit, it doesn't look like it has been for you. To your credit. That's the, the mask I choose to wear. So you ever have to do that? Put on a smile, fake, fake it. Well, I mean, in terms of masks, I do have a secret identity when I transform, but... So I do have to hide that from people, which is tough. It's really interesting though. Like I don't really wear a mask per se, but for some reason when I transform, I have the same face, but people don't recognize me when I transform into Flavor Oom. I don't know why. That is strange. I don't even have to wear glasses. Huh. Yeah, I don't know. Your world is interesting. <laughs> I never, it's just one of those things I just never really questioned too much. Well, thank you for checking up on me and, um, yeah, the transformation was weird, but, uh, I'm still kicking, I guess. Well, if you need help, because we might go back to Black Powder's world, if you need help with bodily functions uh, um maybe you'll feel more comfortable with me helping you since i know what that's like and i know what you're probably going through because it was definitely something that i had to um navigate through myself yeah 